As long as Jamal Murray does not hey. eat the W. Hey. What if Jamal went? Oh! <laughs> <laughs>
what he gets them off balance so when he does that step back or whatever moves he's doing yeah just like Nelson said he has a lot of time to set the shot and make his the shot. step back is nice it's nice yo he shoots almost like a like a seven foot guy kind of huh? yeah yeah yeah. he, he, he doesn't jump high off the ground it's a big arc his legs are definitely slanted and he jumps forward and he shoots kind of like above his head like this Luca, that's good all right now we got Nikola Jokic the Joker the Nuggets are killing it this year. Yeah, he is are. also killing it. Yo, he should have been an all-star last year. Mm -hmm. There's no way he's not an all-star this year. Oh. You know what it is for a big man? He doesn't really dunk on people that yeah. often. But he schools people. He's, he's a oh, finesse yeah. player. He schools people he's a finesse player. like none other. He is better than Carl Anthony Towns. <laughs> yeah. Without him. Yes. Yeah, of course, yes. man. Way he, more skillful. Plus, I think he's a better leader, too, than Cat. He doesn't look as cool, even though he makes really cool plays. It's just not as... It's flashy, it, it, it kind of does. It, super it does kind of look like the the skilled big man at the gym. Like he's not that tall, <laughs> you know. Like yeah, he yeah. he kind of looks like chubby. He looks flabby. out of shape. Some of these passes he's throwing to me, the greatest thing about Jokic is his expression. Like he just kind of goes like this. You've never seen good pass before. <laughs> like it was expected. Yeah. No know? big deal. So for this pass, he was covered by like four Spurs players, and somehow he was able to throw a no look behind the back pass for an assist. A reset on the 20. Oh, oh. oh. back! Oh my gosh! Oh my Come on. There's a reset on the 20. Oh, oh. behind the back! Would you guys agree that the European big men typically are better passers and shooters than the American big men? Oh, for sure. They're way more fundamental. By it's far. also because they don't dunk as much. Yeah. When you say they don't dunk as much, it's because they're not as athletic. What do you think it is like about the way the international guys are coached or they're taught growing up or like, is it because they can't just catch alley oops and stuff like that? They have where to, they're forced to develop other because skills. Because they're not that athletic, they have to rely more on their skill. Basically, European players growing up, they're working a lot more on the fundamentals, playing team ball, while in the states. You know, people are focused on AAU. It's a Isolate. it's a highlight and a showcase. If in America they could produce more players with the skill of Jokic, then maybe they should think about changing things here. You do have a point, but the only problem is it's boring. People want to work on shooting deep threes and dunking the ball, right? If they want to work on the fundamentals, no one really wants to do that. That's why they just want to be cool. That's why European players always come out a lot more fundamentally sound. Also, you got to understand that these guys are also so skilled because they actually start playing professional basketball at a much younger age. They play at like two. <laughs> Tony yeah. Parker, for example, started playing pro when he was like 14. Like he wasn't even going to school anymore. No, right? that's it. I'm not saying you should do that, but it is a different system out there. On this next pass, Jokic calls for it in the high post and he does a two-hand, no-look over-the-head pass. I remember the first international player to ever do this pass was Arvinas Sabonis. Oh, right. Blasted Young in front of us. Look at him throw what? that over-the-head pass and blasted Young in front of us and look at him throw that over the head. Coming in from Canada, we have a little guy in the name of Jamal Murray. He's been starting to kill within the last few seasons and lately, he's been cooking. Poutine. Man, and not only has he been cooking, he's been letting people know that he's been cooking by celebrating, celebrating so much where it really pissed off Kyrie Irving. <laughs> Man, that was kind of crazy. But in all, in all defense, to Jamal Murray, Kyrie shouldn't have let him drop 48 points. He dropped 48 on your head, boy. Oh, hey, man. man, you can't get mad at somebody for going for 50 if they yep. only got 48. Exactly. Yeah. That's my opinion. No, don't let him get 48 if you yeah, don't want to exactly. let him get 50. All right, guys, so we know Jamal Murray is known for his celebration. He does that a lot. We call oh. that the blue arrow. What did you guys think about him when he, he did the Jameson Winston? <laughs> he almost was like eating the dub afterwards when he went. Hey, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. W. Let's eat one. That's E1, that's a W. Not the signature celebration, but the signature move that he just pulled three times on the Celtics. And I feel like if you do a move three times in one game, it's your signature move. It's this crazy up and under. His up and under, I don't even know, man, because to me, it doesn't really look like quite like Kobe or DeRozan's up and under. Or even look, Rondo, yeah, you know, it, back it, then when Rondo used to do yeah, it. It looks a little bit more like crude, but he's just got people jumping. But here's what happened. He got Jalen Brown jumping, but then he pulled the move twice on Al Horford. Al Horford didn't necessarily leave the ground, but you could tell his hands went up, mm -hmm. and then he just went right got up under him. him. All right, Jamal Murray on Jalen Brown. Now Murray looking for another shot. Up and under. Oh. Another shot. Up and under. As long as Jamal Murray does not hey. eat the W. Hey. What if Jamal went? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> on this play, Jamal Murray drives down the middle of the key, pump fakes, steps through, and does a left hand layup. Woo! So let's see it. For Murray! Murray. Up and under again! For Murray! Murray. 
Up and under again. All right, guys, we got to talk about Joe Ingles. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, Joe Ingles, not that flashy of a player, only averaging 13 points a game. But let me tell you this. When you watch him play, are you not impressed? He is a killer. <laughs> He's a Paul killer. George killer. Yo, man, oh, he yeah, yeah, was yeah. getting in Paul George's head, man. He ruined yeah. his career, bro. He ruined his career. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, God, you let Joe, Joe Ingles destroy you like that? Mentally and You're physically. Done. He looks like he's about 41 years old. He's only 31, and his shot, we gotta talk about his shot, because he's good at a lot of stuff, but we'll just focus on his form, because his form as a lefty is pretty interesting. Hey, you know they say elbows in, Joe, and you're saying, yeah, the they don't really think so, man, they're gonna get with the elbows out. <laughs> hey, oh, it's yeah. like the follow through, kiss my hand, kiss my hand. <laughs> Joe Ingles, Get some of Joe Ingles. You know we can't talk about international players without the man with the alphabet in his name, Giannis Antetokounmpo. The, the Greek, Greek, Greek Freak. This guy is not just doing Euro steps, he's doing gyro steps just across the court. He is the most unstoppable player in transition. Remember in the summer, he was making all those goofy videos? Yeah, he's like, I'm not just a freak on the court, also a freak in the sheets. He could be a freak on the court. And on the shit. I don't play Fortnite at night. I foreplay at night. <laughs> I only foreplay at night. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a hey, one thing I gotta say about Giannis this season, one on one, he's looking unstoppable. He's making everyone look like little kids. Giannis on the run is maybe the scariest thing in the NBA. It is crazy how he can take a one two step from an NBA three point line and still dunk it with ease. So, this was in the playoffs last year when they're playing the Celtics. This play is an ankle breaking Euro step. Basically, he Euros so fast and so hard that the defender just falls back. I've never seen someone fall down from a Euro step. That's well, because the whole point of a Euro is to avoid contact, Yeah. Right? What makes Giannis' Antetokounmpo's side steps, Euro steps so effective is you don't know if he's going to do a Euro step or he's going to go take a long stride and step Straight to the same basket. side. Well, it's either like a layup if he goes left and you just going to get dunked on if he goes right. Nah. If Giannis learns how to shoot, league shut down. This is no nah, one stopping yeah. If, no if one stopping Giannis him. learns how to shoot, he will be like the equivalent of Kevin Durant and LeBron James together. Let's show you. Giannis, look at these moves. Look at that Euro step. Giannis, look at these moves. Look at that Euro step. All right, guys. Last but not least, we're talking about Ronnie Chang's favorite player. Ah, we're talking about another Aussie, Ben Simmons, everybody. Yo, lefties with funny looking shots. Or in Ben Simmons' case, no shot. But it's weird because you do see him shoot in warm ups, you do see him, see him shoot in practice, and he kind of makes them. What is it about it, uh, the game situation, that prevents him from taking a shot? I think he realizes he's so big, so quick, so strong. Why not just take it to the rack and finish around the rim? Why do I need to shoot? That's probably what he's thinking. I just don't think he's confident enough in you know, his, his shooting. Yeah. Hey, I gotta say this, I'm a Markel fan. Markel's still really not a good shooter, but he's willing to take like six threes a game. That's why he's gonna be good, because you know he has the confidence. You said he's not you know, scared to go yeah, one for he's six. He's not scared, he's not scared. I, I guess Ben Simmons probably figures, yo, I'm so much better at passing, let me just figure out a way to pass to a teammate. We gotta go through some Ben Simmons signature moves, man. We gotta show some of his Magic Johnson-like passes. All right, so this first one, Embiid is trailing behind, and Ben Simmons, in the most smooth way, drops it underneath his legs when he's right in front of Joel, and Joel goes up for the slam. This was one of the smoothest versions of this move I've ever seen in the NBA, let alone by someone who's like 6'10". Here comes Simmons between the legs. Oh. Embiid! Here comes Simmons between the legs. He, he also got a pretty interesting array of like uh, sky hooks, right? He does, he does. Ben Simmons can make some very awkward hook shots, but cannot hit an open jumper. That's he has taken zero three-pointers this season. We also got Andrew Wiggly Wiggins. And it's funny, because I would say actually Andrew Wiggly Wiggins, not that wiggly. Not Andrew Wiggins is so stiff. To me, he kind of feels like a Harrison Barnes. He'll, he'll be really choppy, right? Jab step. His upper body is very upright. Yes. His legs might be getting low, but his upper body is always very upright. Very stiff. I Just mean, he pretty much he pretty much only got that drop step spin move into yeah. either a finger roll or like pull up. Yeah. That's like the only move that he has, right? Yeah. I would say Andrew, well, Andrew would you, Stiffens. Would Andrew you, Stiffens. <laughs> would, you, would you say that a lot of people are disappointed with Andrew Wiggins' development as a player? I, I know a, I know somebody who's very disappointed is Jimmy Butler. I don't think there's too many of them that will tell you that I'm a bad teammate. The Timberwolves beef is not just between Jimmy Butler and Carl Anthony Towns. It is also between Jimmy Butler, Andrew Wiggins. <laughs> <laughs> very disappointed. Uh, still, still very talented, still young. 
but something's going to happen for the game. No yeah, passion, no fire. Something's going to have to shift in his mentality. He might need to get new trainers or something. The work ethic is not yeah. there. All right, guys, Joel Embiid. A and ben Andre Drummond's uh, daddy. So he owns real estate in his head. I feel like I own a lot of real estate in his head. Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, right? There was so much hype about the Sixers this year. They're doing okay, but they're not really killing it. Yeah, they're not. What's they're going not. on? Is Joel actually doing his no, job? No, Joel actually makes a lot of boneheaded mistakes sometimes. He turns the ball over a lot. Like, he's he a really bad passer. Much. Like, he'll see some guy trying to come up for the ball, but then he'll back door, but he'll throw the ball still. Very, very fluid offensively. I think if you look at Joel Embiid's highlights, he almost looks like the greatest player in NBA history. And then you don't know that there's a lot of like kind of recklessness that comes along with that. But incredibly fluid. What is it about the international players? They're making up a third of the NBA. It's possible in a few more years they might make up 35, 40% of the NBA. What is it? I think basketball is just going overall. It's a lot more popular and players are a lot more willing to make the sacrifice and make the global move to try to make it to the NBA. While a lot of players in the leagues, the professional leagues, they're content being overseas, right? So they don't try to work on their game and improve themselves so they can stay in the NBA or make the NBA. Outside of America, if you round up all the players, there's way, way, way more professional basketball players than just in the NBA. The NBA only has 300 players. Out there in the world, I don't know, thousands, right? So you're taking some of the best ones, and maybe the best ones don't want to come over, but some of the best ones, and you're only picking those to be in the NBA. So that's why it seems like they're so good, because they really are that good. It just shows you that it, it just shows you that it's not an American dream anymore. People from all over the world, you know, who has a goal in making it big in basketball is trying to get into the NBA, whether it's Europe, uh, Asia, you know, Africa, Latin America. Everyone's obviously, you want to play with the best of the best, and that's the NBA. Today's game is a lot more fast paced. You can rely on your outside shooting, which a lot of European players are really good at. But also, one thing in the league, people around the basket are way craftier. A lot more side steps, zero steps, step backs, all these different type of footwork and technical moves. These European players are really good at that. So they kind of blend in with the game a lot more. And then some of these players are becoming a little more athletic. So they can actually hang around in the league a lot more. One thing I want to say is the first player that really played like Steph was Sarunas Jasakevicic, but only in the, in the Lithuanian league. Right, he was being. The he was Steph basically doing league. what Steph was doing in the NBA, but only in Lithuania league. So it goes to show you there was players pretty much dominating from a, you know, purely over there, but they just couldn't do it amongst the big trees of the NBA. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys, in the comment section below, make sure you let us know who is your favorite new international player in the NBA and what is their signature move. Also, let us know what other types of basketball videos you'd like us to make. Leave it in the comments right down there below. Shout out to Nelson from Hoopin' Life. Shout out to Kev Law. That's David and Andrew from the Fun Bros. Guys, that was the international edition of NBA Signature Moves. Man, the NBA is exciting. All right, stay tuned for more basketball videos because the NBA season is underway. All right, everybody, thanks for watching that video. And until next time, we out. Peace.